video conferencing and broadcasting has become such an important part of our lives lately, and we're going to share some tips how to do it remotely while living a mobile lifestyle. Hi, I'm Chris. And I'm Sharif. And today we're going to talk to you about well, something so many of us are doing a lot more of now, which is living the Zoom lifestyle. This is uh, using mobile internet for not just streaming and downloading all the traditional things, but video conferencing and even video broadcasting because, well, life, the world's changed. That's how we interact now with <laughs> other people during this COVID pandemic world. And so many that are working home remotely or just keeping in touch with friends and family, you're doing it over video conferencing, whether that's FaceTime, Zoom, Skype, Microsoft mm -hmm. Teams, um, Twitch. There's so many things that we're that have become very, very common that weren't quite as common in the past that are all based on a you know, kind of turning the tables on the way people used to use the internet, mobile internet. You're not downloading and streaming data where the data is all coming to you anymore. Now, it's hugely important, the data going back up from you to the towers. And this has become a major distinction between regular internet at home, which might be based on cable or DSL, and mobile internet. Now, a lot of us mobile folks living in RVs and boats, we've gotten really used to being able to download the content we want to work remotely or even just see the world remotely. But we introduced this new aspect of having to do bro uh, broadcasting and video conferencing all the time. But we just set the bar and the complexity and the reliability that our setups have to have. And it's possible, but it's going to take a little bit different approach to be able to do it reliably on the road. But first, what is the difference? What makes it so much more difficult over just like streaming over Netflix? Yeah. So, so let's just start with, with streaming. Streaming is primarily downloading video to you. It's usually been pre-compressed. It's got... Um, um, Buffering happens so that if there's any glitches and stuff that interrupt the connection, by the time it, you probably don't even notice it because the glitches just all get smoothed out by the buffering and the caching inside your streaming software. So that is a whole different world than broadcasting and conferencing where it is real-time interactive and there's data going up as well. So broadcasting. Yep. So video broadcasting. Now this would be like if you're on a, if you have a YouTube channel and you do a live or you do it over Facebook or Twitch, this is when you have a camera set up at you <laughs> and you are broadcasting live to the internet and then people are watching you remotely live. Now there's no opportunity in there for glitches to be smoothed out. <laughs> no, every glitch will make it through to the end of the stream. And Upload capacity is very different than download capacity. So when you're watching a video over YouTube, like you're watching this video, you're using download capacity. But when you are broadcasting, you are using upload. The, the data is coming from you then going up to the internet. And on most internet sources, the internet service providers or ISPs have less capacity set aside for upload than they do download because in the past it hasn't been as important. And, and just uploading is just in general a lot harder because your tiny little radio and your mobile devices is trying to broadcast back up to the towers and the towers have big radios are powerful to push the download to you. Your little radio is having a harder time doing it so uploads almost always are slower just by nature than downloads and so if you're suddenly needing a lot more upload speed your, your connection might be a lot more challenging than you realized. <laughs> Okay, and then there's video conferencing, which is taking both download and upload into play. Because this is where, like when you're on a Zoom call, for instance, you are both broadcasting your video to that video chat room. And you are also downloading the video of maybe <laughs> one person or 40, 100 people if you're <laughs> in large group meetings. Right. So that's a lot of data that's going up and down at the same time live mm -hmm. again without that much ability for the video software to be able to compensate for any glitches that might be happening on your end of the connection so when we're talking about these new the, the, the challenges we're going to be talking about today are all focused on increasing upload speed and performance and then the network reliability to avoid those glitches that could end up interrupting your audience. Because that reliability is what becomes critically important when you're mobile because those of us that have been RVing and, and or boating and working and using mobile <laughs> internet remotely, we know reliability is that word that you kind of have to be a little flexible with because your internet connection can change at any moment in any location. And that's what we're going to be focusing this video on.
So first off, a quick recap of the different ways that RVers and cruisers get online and how appropriate they might be for broadcasting and conferencing. Uh, first off, satellite. You know, traditional satellite systems use geostationary satellites that are so far out in space, 26,000 miles up above the equator, that the time delay of the data going back and forth does not make that at all useful for two-way conferencing uh, because there's that pause between you and the other person. You'll be talking all over each other. It just does not work. It can be useful for um, doing broadcasting, but not good for conferencing. Now, there are the next generation satellite systems like a Starlink rolling out that are much lower orbit satellites, and those actually will have latencies that are appropriate for conferencing and speeds as well, but those are just now you know, barely rolling out and uh, not quite available for mobile users just yet. So keep your eye on satellite, but it's really not quite a way to do these things just yet. Uh, next up is Wi-Fi, and everybody thinks I could take advantage of the free Wi-Fi on offer at my campground or marina or just publicly available wherever I'm at. And indeed, you might be able to, particularly if it's an isolated network with a really good speeds, like if you're driveway surfing at a friend's place, but Wi-Fi, particularly public Wi-Fi, is often so subject to dropouts and reliability issues that it is hard to trust. Your neighbor at the next RV could start their microwave and that's on the same frequencies as Wi-Fi and your network drops while their popcorn is popping. Or you know, the boat one over, one slip over at a marina, he starts a big download and your performance crashes in the middle of your broadcast or your conferencing. So because there's so many variables outside your control, it's really hard to rely on and trust Wi-Fi for broadcasting and conferencing needs. So that leaves cellular, which is what most of us use, whether you're using cellular routers or hotspots or uh, even just the cellular on our phone. You control a lot more of the variables and you have a lot more ability to um, really optimize the connection for broadcasting and conferencing, and we're going to go deeper into that now. So now let's talk about the data needs necessary to do broadcasting and conferencing. Now, the minimum speeds that you're going to need to be able to successfully get a smooth broadcast or conferencing situation going it's going to be very variable based upon the platform that you're using and the resolution that you want to be able to get that video at. So you do want to check the specifications of whatever application you're using, whether that's Zoom or Microsoft Teams or any other learning platforms that you might be doing, or if you're doing teleconferencing or telehealth sorts of things remotely, definitely check the specs to see what the minimum requirements are for upload and download speed. But generally anticipate you want to aim for getting at least three megabit per second upload and download speeds to do successful video conferencing. And more is always better. Now, the amount of data that you're going to use to do this, it's going to add up. Video takes a lot of data to be able to do successfully. And most of the apps, again, are going to be very variable depending upon the app itself, as well as those video resolution settings that you're using. So do check into that for the minimum data usage that you're going to need, and then multiply that by how many hours a week or month you're going to need to be able to do this sort of video conferencing or broadcasting with, so that you can select the data plans that are most appropriate for your needs. Now, do anticipate that most of these are going to use anywhere from half a gigabyte all the way up to three gigabytes per hour to do a successful stream or video conferencing with multiple people. And if you're getting up into 4K video casting, expect that to double or triple or even more. So keep those things in mind. Now, some tips on how to optimize your connectivity for uh, the concerns of broadcasting and conferencing. First off, this is one of the few cases where we think a booster actually might make a lot of sense for you. Because cellular boosters, as we covered in many other videos, will often slow down your download performance in a lot of places, but they will almost always improve your upload performance because they have a much louder megaphone broadcasting your signal back to the tower. So if you're doing broadca uh, broadcasting or conferencing, you might not be so concerned about peak download speeds. You really want to optimize your upload speed so the tower hears you, and a cellular booster can be a very useful tool to have in your arsenal for those situations. Keep it in mind. 
You don't need it everywhere, but sometimes very handy. Next up is a technique called bonding. This is when you combine multiple connections together, and this can be incredibly useful for increasing your reliability because cellular networks still do have little glitches, and you know, Verizon might have a dropout here, but if your AT&T connection is still strong, if you can split your stream up across multiple connections, you're able to avoid those little glitches and stuff. And particularly if you're trying to do any sort of broadcasting or conferencing while driving down the road or water where you're passing from one cell tower to the next to the next, being able to spread your connections out amongst multiple cellular carriers can give you a really reliable way to do that. And you can do that with routers that support bonding built into them, like, you know, um, PepWave's devices taking advantage of their speed fusion bonding, or actually the... Um, uh, Speedify software running on a phone or a tablet can actually combine multiple connections as well. So definitely look into that. Speedify even has a special streaming mode that will detect and optimize for conferencing software. And then finally, one other pro tip is to avoid Wi-Fi glitches in your local area. Again, somebody putting on a microwave and making some popcorn is if you can get your local devices talking to your router over Ethernet and you are eliminating one wireless hop so you no longer have to worry about you know, the local Wi-Fi interfering with your signal. Just one less variable to worry about and could lead to more reliable broadcast. How are you going to get enough data to be able to accomplish your video broadcasting and conferencing needs? That can be difficult because as more and more of us are working remotely, the carriers are kind of limiting some of the plan options that are out there that allow for a lot of video usage. So you might have to get a little creative in looking for ways to get a lot of data. You know, we track data plans all the time. You will find a lot of resources on it, on our content. So do check for our current top pick data plans to see what are the current best options out there. We put out updates constantly on this. Now with smartphone plans, you are going to find two limitations that you want to pay particular attention to. And that's going to be the mobile hotspot usage that is allowed with your data plan. You might have an unlimited plan, but it might be for on-device usage only. And if you are wanting to broadcast from a laptop or desktop computer, you're going to be using that mobile hotspot usage off of your smartphone, and they usually have a cap in it, sometimes 15, 30, or up to 100 gigabytes of high-speed usage. So keep that in mind. Plans might also have video throttling on them. Usually that just applies to video downloading from sites like YouTube or Netflix or Hulu. But... I wouldn't put it out of the realm of possibility that as usage has increased, that the carriers might also start applying that to video conferencing software like Zoom or Teams. So pay attention to that if in case they ever do that in the future. Now, there's also data plans that you get specifically for data devices like jetpacks and hotspots and routers. Um, those will come with a set amount of data or they might be unlimited if you're going through a third-party unlimited reseller. Just do be aware of any terms and conditions that might impact your ability to be able to do lots of video work on them. They might have terms in there that could apply. But here's a trick. A tablet or even a smartphone, they have video cameras built in, they have microphones built in, and they have speakers built in. They are a perfect all-in-one video conferencing and broadcasting tool. In fact, that's how Chris and I got our start over a decade ago with doing live video broadcasts was over an unlimited iPad plan. That's where we started doing our YouTube content on with live stream content. And it's just as viable today as it was back then. You can get really sweet unlimited data plans for cellular enabled tablets, you can sometimes add them on to your smartphone plan with the carriers for as little as 10 to $30 per month and get unlimited on-device data. And if you are broadcasting from the iPad or even your smartphone, all the video services like Microsoft Teams and Zoom and Skype, they have apps for these devices. So you can do everything right from this device and use that unlimited on-device data without worrying about mobile hotspot caps. So they are fantastic for doing personal, casual, and even professional level video broadcasts and video conferencing with your, your people that you're trying to connect with. So it's a great way to use unlimited data plans without worrying 
about all of those caps or shopping for all of these plans with high data caps. So keep that in mind as a tool that you might consider in your arsenal. Of course, the downside is there's no antenna ports on here, so you are restricted to using a cellular booster as your only option for getting a better signal. And that might be a concern for some as well. So this really is possible to do effective conferencing, broadcasting, and all of that on the road. So if you're considering hitting the road in an RV or a boat and your job requirements or your social life or your schooling for your kids requires this sort of interaction, don't fear it, but <laughs> do plan around it. And remember the other critical tools in the arsenal, and that's planning your travels around connectivity, making sure you're going to have enough signal when you get to your next spot and just being flexible. Have redundancy in your setup so you have multiple options to try at each location. Now we have a ton of other resources that you can tap into. There is a guide that goes along with this video that goes into a lot more depth. We track all of the uh, terms and conditions of all of the uh, mobile streaming apps so that you know how much data usage to anticipate on them. We have lots of tools for working remotely. And a, and a lot of experience, because we have literally been doing this for over a decade, doing a ton of broadcast, a ton of two-way conferencing, and we've picked up basically every tip and trick that is out there. I hope so. I hope if so. If not, <laughs> our mobile internet aficionados community helps fill us in, and that is the community that makes our videos all possible. We are not sponsored. We don't rely on advertising or selling stuff. We are member-funded to be able to create these free videos, and for that, our MIAs get a lot of extra perks, like interactive guidance in our forums, our webinars. We do these regularly with them answering questions about their needs on the road, as well as they get discounts with vendors and access to all of our in-depth content. Lots of good stuff. So um, maybe we'll see you on a live stream sometime or conferencing with us with sometime out there as well. You know, see you online. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.